Did you know that there was a spirit in Ireland that predates Irish whiskey? And it was banned. Find out more next on Leet Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Leet Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Leet Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for a very special edition of the show. I'm here with Dave Mulligan uh, doing, uh, first of all, I went to a seminar today about Poutine and there's like three other ways to pronounce it, I'll have him tell you that. But uh, we're gonna talk about Poutine, talk about his brand and Dave, kind of tell us about you, your background and, and your passion for this spirit and what, what the history of it is. Sure thing, yeah, nice one for having us on as well. Yeah, Delighted absolutely. To be here. So um, Dave Mulligan, I'm a Dublin native and uh, I've been a bartender my whole life or, or in the service industry anyway. Uh, started in kitchens when I was kind of 13, washing the pots, made my first cocktails at 16 and then haven't looked back since. Um, always wanted to open my own place and then I've, I opened one in London uh, in 2012, mm -hmm. kind of a three year project and then in Dublin I've just moved home, opened my first bar, bar 1661 and we are the putching specialists of the world. Yeah. 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 So, so we, we've covered one way to pronounce it, putching. Uh, <laughs> There's three others, right? Yeah. Well, th I'd say let's go with three. <laughs> okay. The, the easiest one for me, because it's an Irish spelling, you know, is um, you put a CH in there yeah. and overpronounce the pot. You okay. know, so it's pachin. Pachin, yeah. Pachin. That's the way to say it up in Northern Ireland. Yeah. And I make my pachin in Northern Ireland. It's also the easiest for the anglicized nations to get their tongue around, you know. And the other one is pachin. Pachin, okay. Pachin, that's more around Dublin. And then patin. Poutine, poutine okay. be softly spoken poutine and be the more Gale talk the Irish speaking regions right. in the west of Ireland, you know, with the soft, soft pronunciation, yeah. So we talked about part of my background is, is the Isles, except for Wales, but the rest of it is Europe, but a lot of it is Italian. So the Pacin reminds me of Facin, which is a really derogatory Italian American thing. Um, <laughs> I'll so, ask you off camera. <laughs> you can ask me off camera. It is actually pretty derogatory. Uh, right, right. Um, and usually, and sometimes you put a little S, like like Facin is usually how you say it. Okay. So all my Italian American brethren know exactly what I said, but I'll tell you that later. Yeah, so right. yeah, so kind of uh, give us a little brief history of uh, uh, Pacin and what it is and what it's not. What it is yeah. and what it's not. Okay, yeah. well, we've got, legend has about 1,500 years of history. Um, I'm gonna say 1,000. First written records are maybe 700, but mm -hmm. we know we were making it for a long time before. So every country's got their native spirit. People are always, always gonna think whiskey when it comes to Ireland, but right. you know, whiskey came a long time after the putchy and making at home. Yeah. Um, it was our culture, same as the Scots, to distill way before the whiskey industry ramped up into big, big copper stills. We made this stuff at home. Mm -hmm. It was part of the culture. We weren't a beer drinking nation. Arthur Guinness didn't rock up till 1759 and change, <laughs> change the country. Got the thousand year lease or whatever, right? He's yeah. got a thousand year lease for a <laughs> yeah. pound, yeah. yeah. Um, sitting on a billion dollars now. Um, but yeah, Putchin is, you know, it is the native white Irish spirit. It would have been the granddaddy to whiskey and not just Irish whiskey. I mean, Scottish, I mean, American. Um, Ireland and Scotland, there's always the argument who made up with, who came up with whiskey first. For Irish to claim it, um, it's a bit difficult for us because the Scots outsell us 20 to one, you know, yeah. on the open market. So when we say, oh, it was actually it was us first, uh, but we do have the first written records, okay? okay? But looking at, looking at who, who invented it first, you've got to really look at, at where we were back then. You know, you're going back a thousand years, you're looking at two colonized countries, colon, colonized by the British, um, peasant people, but, the people, the first records of distillation are actually in Northern Ireland, up in Donegal, okay? Not the north of Ireland, but the north, the north of the country, in Donegal. Um, and what you can see from Donegal, as you can across most of the north coast, is on a clear day, you get a good view of the islands of Scotland, in particular, Islay, yeah. you know, the biggest whiskey producing micro region in the world. Yeah. But um, the people of the north and the people of the Scotland would have had a lot more dealings with each other than they ever would have with the people down south. So I like to say who invented it? It was Celtic people, you know, yeah, it was the yeah. Celts did it. But um, what they were making, 
barrel aging only came along in the middle of the 1800s, so whiskey was a white spirit as well. The way they differentiated the two was whiskey came out of the big distilleries, out of the big cities, and what was made at home was potsheen. And the word itself in Irish just means little pot. Yeah. So it was a bit of a pet name for the Irish, how to differentiate unlabeled white spirits. Well, that's the Parliament whiskey we used to call it because it was <laughs> controlled by the British, controlled by the Crown. And yeah. then what we made at home was, was the potsheen. Yeah. So um, kind of talk about, um, so that, that's kind of history of, of what, what it is. And then you, when you're in your um, seminar today, you really went through a lot of that history, but kind of talk about um, uh, kind of the taxes part of things. So that really kind of was, I think, pretty instrumental, uh, a big change of sure. why Pachin didn't, didn't continue and why the other stuff kind of came around. Sure, that was really sure. interesting. Well, I think, you know, you look at a lot of things and, you know, whiskey aging and, you know, it's two years here, but three years in Ireland, is that a quality thing? I don't know if it is. I see yeah. it as a, a barrier to entry. If I was putting a cap on whiskey, I'd call it seven years mm -hmm. before it's getting really good. A three-year-old right, whiskey, yeah. nobody's looking for that. But um, it was a barrier to entry for the small guys. So the taxation was exactly the same. You know, in 1661, which is the name of the bar, that was when the, the British first started taxing Irish alcohol. Okay. But what it did was it put a lot of pressure onto the licensed whiskey distilleries that were off operating out of the four major cities. And then the people at home, we never drank the stuff from the cities. We drank the stuff that we made ourselves. So you're making it in your kitchen from barley you've grown yourself. It, it was very easy to hide that, you know. Right. But um, they just put so much pressure on the on the whiskey distillers that the Brits trying to fund foreign wars or whatever they were doing back in the day, um, that they actually started squeezing the life out of the whiskey industry. And we ended up with a lesser quality spirit, which only fed into the, the home distiller more because Putchin would have been, it would rarely have left the town it was made. It was very much about the community, mm -hmm. you know, so there would have been a couple of people in the town making it, generally the women. And yeah. as in particular, if a, if a woman, if she was made a widow, you know, if she lost her yeah. husband, the town would actually chip in and buy a still for her as a way of supporting her family and, and having a livelihood. So her job was to make the Putchin, but how is the tax man ever going to get at that, you know? So you got to jump forward 99 years, and uh, 1760 is when they changed the game again, and they said, um, you know, now it's it's not just tax. You got to have a liquor license. You got to have health certs. We got to know what you intend on making. And they they did something like the three year age thing, where they actually banned a minimum st still size. So anything south of 200 gallons was now illegal. You know, so that for me again was that was just to eradicate eradicate the home distiller. That meant if you're not a serious player, if you haven't got big money to get into this, right, we don't want yeah. you in it. You know. Yeah. And, you, and uh, you're talking about how around that time they were getting really creative with trying to avoid the tax man. I mean, we and, still are, right? Yeah, well, we always are, right? Yeah. But uh, basically the location of the stills. Uh, ah, yeah. yeah. So the shared ownership. So what they used to do was um, if you got caught with a still or any potchi and you got a fine, mm -hmm. you got a sliding scale fine, you know? So they used to fine you, say, 50 shillings. Yeah. But the still only cost you 30 shillings. So take it you know yeah. i can just buy a new one so people used to hide them and they wouldn't hide them on their own land because they'd get them if they hit them on their neighbors the neighbor would get the fine so they used to put them in like ditches or or old woods where undisputed land that, that, that nobody had any ownership of and when they found the stills you know it was becoming a problem we, we can't just let them run riot like this so they actually went out after the church you know which was a very clever move from the government because at the time in ireland up until very recent times the the church ruled the roost, you know, they, they did, were yeah. all, all powerful. We went to mass every Sunday, if not more often. And what they said was gospel. They could really control mm -hmm. the people. So they dipped their hand in the, the church's pocket. I mean, that never goes down too well, <laughs> asking the church for money. So these guys, they went against Putchin. The, the government was fine in the parish. So the priest overnight, they went out in force to turn communities against Putchin. And yeah. they actually made it a, uh, something called a reserve sin. Reserve sin, We yeah. don't see a lot of anymore. We see a lot at this cocktail conference, but <laughs> a reserve yeah, sin. I, I learned what that was today and I, I grew up Catholic. I didn't yeah. know what that was. <laughs> You're lucky, obviously yeah, right? you were a good boy. But uh, a reserve sin basically means that a normal priest can't give you confession. You gotta seek yeah. out a bishop, otherwise you're going to hell. And that was drinking it, wow. making it, selling it, anything to yeah. do with it, you were going to hell. So they very quickly turned a nation, a thousand year culture, they very quickly turned a lot, a lot of people against it because whatever the priest said was, was gospel. Exactly, yeah. 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 So let's talk about um, what what's the, uh, what's the uh, basic green, the main green that is used to make this. So 
for me, barley is king. Mm -hmm. Same as whiskey. You've got to think whiskey. Ireland, Scotland, native barley growing nations. The first references we had, you know, of um, of drinking barley are from the 11th century, but they don't specify what it was. Okay. So we can guess that we were distilling. We could have been drinking a barley wine. Right. But, you know, it wouldn't have all been malted. They would have tried to malt it over time because they understood that the, right. the flavor worked better and the enzymes. Um, but, you know, they would have used some unmalted grain. They would have used things like green barley, oats, rye, wheat, and then things like maris otter, which were very popular in brewing. And then through its illegal history, you know, it was really driven into an underground culture, much like your American moonshine, you know? Yeah. And um, that was from 1661 Because they on. did a lot of the same. They hid their stuff all, yeah. Yeah, they <laughs> had to hide the stills. But that actually evolved the spirit, you know? So in the last, you know, potatoes, potatoes only rocked up people. A lot of people think real Puccina's potatoes. It predates the potato by about 700 years in Ireland. Right, you yeah. Know? So that only rocked up kind of late or early 1700s. Um, so that would have been used to bulk out a mash bill. Um, things like molasses, beet sugar, Sugar beet molasses, mm -hmm. not, not imported, but we grow sugar beets in Ireland as you do here in America. That refined kind of, it's like a black strap okay. molasses, you know? And yeah. um, that's been very popular in the last hundred years or so. Um, so yeah, you, we've got a whole array of ingredients. They capped it fairly recently because some people were going mad, but I mean, people make this stuff from a lot of things all yeah. over Ireland, especially the illegal distiller. Um, you know, they, they would have traditionally malted your own grain, but if you're trying to stay out of the watchful eye of the tax man and you've got barley drying for three to five days with plumes of white smoke right, going yeah. up. It doesn't really make for no, it things a secret, you know? So definitely the unmalted grain, potatoes, stuff like that. That's when that all became more popular, okay, yeah. yeah. You got a map too, don't you, about the... I, I have a little map there, yeah, a little sheet sheet. It helps me out in seminars, yeah. Yeah, right. So, um, and then we'll, we'll briefly talk about, like, there's a big decline, like, in the, the like, 1800s, late 1800s. Um, what, what... What were like, there's like four factors, whatever, that really kind of had the decline of Pachin, right? Well, that was, that was more the decline of Irish whiskey. Yeah, you know? Irish, oh, Irish, I'm sorry, Irish, Irish whiskey, whiskey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the crossover with Irish whiskey is fascinating. Now, I, I can't talk about Pachin without getting into the history yeah. of Irish whiskey. You know, Irish whiskey was a, a very British controlled industry operating out of Ireland. Mm -hmm. A lot of the whiskey companies, they don't like to say that, but, you know, you look at the names that are still floating around, a lot yeah. of people bringing back heritage brands, they ain't Irish names. And John Jameson, he's well documented as a, you know, he was an Ulster Scot, he was a Protestant, you know, and in order to start the, the size of the distilleries and the operation at the time, um, the Irish whiskey industry, you would have had to be in bed with the crown. Um, and yeah. why it went out of fashion, you know, it, it was a shit show. It was, yeah. uh, Less than two decades, I don't think any industry could have survived. Um, 1912, we, the Scots were already getting going with their blends. We mm -hmm. hadn't embraced blending whiskey yet, using the, using the column stills. But, yeah. um, you know, 1912, we had the murmurs of an uprising. That obviously kicked off 1916, where we went against the British. At the same time, World War I was happening. So there was right. massive food rations, grain rations. It wasn't so cool to be distilling <laughs> grain when people needed yeah. to eat, yeah. you know? So... That was one thing, but in 1916, we got our freedom. You know, the, the Brits did a deal. They took the North and, and they decided to give it back, but they weren't happy about it. And what came with that was a, a massive trade embargo. Nothing in, nothing out. So Irish whiskey, while it was the world's biggest, we really sold within that British empire. And then in the latter years to America, um, but then America, you know, after this trade embargo, we didn't mind because we might have lost the empire, but we got our freedom and we still had our brothers in America to buy all our, our yeah. beautiful Irish whiskey. And then 1922, what are you guys going to do? <laughs> you, you turn off the tap, you close the door. You right. close the door. So we have this, this huge industry that was slowing already, but, you know, suddenly we lost the empire. Boom, America shuts down. And then by the time Prohibition was 12, 13 years, was yeah. by the time that came back around, the bootleggers in America, you know, um, I, I actually met a journalist, very interesting guy who was researching Prohibition in San Antonio and, and he really firmed up this point because he'd read it in two newspapers that the popular thing for them to do at the time while they were making cheap fake liquid was Irish whiskey was so popular that they'd bang a fake Irish whiskey yeah. label on the bottle and be selling that. So at the same time, we wouldn't sell any whiskey to this side of the world out of respect because mm -hmm. America were our brothers, you know. Um, the Scots, they didn't sell to America, but a lot of whiskey was being sold to Canada and the Caribbean. And it was being smuggled it was in being here. Yeah. smuggled in. Yeah. So you were getting real deal, high quality scotch yeah. versus fake gut rot, you know, counterfeit Irish whiskey. So 12 years of that, when the ban did get lifted, 
nobody was looking for Irish whiskey and it changed everybody's perception of yeah. what it was and that's something we still struggle with we're still seen as a, a low class whiskey but you know there's a couple of Irish whiskies that won best whiskey in the world mm -hmm. and different things and we, we're up to you know when I was a kid we had three distilleries in Ireland yeah there was not that much hype about them made I think you know, as of yesterday, it was kind of 27. Mm -hmm. By next week, it'll probably be 30. They're going at such yeah. a rate, but they're coming thick and fast now. I think, you know, given another five years, there should be 60 decent-sized whiskey distilleries yeah. on the island. Like, Exactly. So let's, let's kind of talk about the brands here, and then brands, uh, yeah. we can kind of talk about you, and we can wrap stuff up, all right? Sure, sure, sure. So there's two brands I'm representing here. Actually, four. The other guys are up at the bar for the after yeah. party. <laughs> but um, Bon I Pachin. might go there. <laughs> yeah, please do. Um, Bon Pachin is my brand. Bon itself, it looks like Ban, B-A-N. Yeah. It's got the accent over the A, so it's pronounced Bon, and mm -hmm. it just means white in Irish. So okay. what is Pachin? It's the white we, Irish yeah. spirit. It mm -hmm. was also banned for 336 Band, yeah. years. So. <laughs> but um, yeah, Bon's my baby. I make it in Ecklinville Distillery, which is about 25 miles from Belfast. And um, We're farmers by trade. My partners are. They grow and malt all the barley themselves. Okay. A big chunk of barley in there, nod to its whiskey heritage. I just love the idea of potato. For a long time, we were the only ones to steal in potato potatoes on the island of yeah. Ireland, if you can believe that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Nobody else has thought of it. <laughs> and then a little bit of that beet molasses that have been used so common in the last 100 years. So yeah. this is really my cocktail background interpreting a spirit. Yeah. And when I got my hands dirty and got into the distillation, I said, why are we adhering to all these rules? Well, you know, we're putching makers. Let's just make the spirit we want to make. Let's get to the flavor we want to get to. And who cares? We're not, you know, we're not offending anyone. We're not cheating. Yeah. Um, the other one, and I got to thank these guys, Mad March Hair. They're, um, they're actually my partners on Bar 6061. Good old John, who owns this, was, it was me and him put our heads together to make a permanent bar in Dublin. A Putchin, the, the cathedral to Putchin as yeah. it was. But Mad, Mar Mad March Hair organized this whole trip. It's a beautiful, it's an entry level Putchin. And when I say entry level, I don't mean quality or price. Yeah, yeah. What I'm talking is it's 40%. It's 100%, that's 80 proof, you know, yeah. it's 100% um, malted barley, and this is triple distilled, but it's not a whiskey. Mm -hmm. It's never intended to be a whiskey. So yeah. they're doing their run, nothing's hitting a barrel, so they got to get it right the first time. So they're slowing those stills right down, they're taking their cuts very, very different. What you get is a beautiful, malty, soft spirit, but it's got a lot of chocolatey, beautiful, biscuity yeah. notes, you know, so it's a really good place to to dip your toe into the category that's that's not too scary, you know? My one here, actually, that's a special edition. I aged that in uh, Isle whiskey casks because mm -hmm. I, I wanted to get a bit of pee into the action. Yeah, we, I we remember that, yeah. We our barley, and I, you know, looking at Isle, I was like, we got to get our barrels from there. We can see it from Northern Ireland, you know? Yeah. And that tie-in back to the heritage of whiskey. I said, let, let, let's try and So that's got quite a peaty finish to it, but it's just my original spirit rested for 10 weeks. Yeah. Nice. Mm. Yeah, and that's, that's like the maximum that you can rest Maximum, it? that's yeah. a new law by you. Yeah. yeah, new law. Yeah, new law. Again, I don't like adhering to the laws, but we, we try to bend the rules <laughs> to say the tax man, right? Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, exactly. Mad, Mad March Hair, I'm not actually in America, you know, so Ireland and the UK are our big markets. We're quite big in London, mm -hmm. and that was where I launched the brand. But then Mad March Hair it is available nationwide, not in, in massive amounts. But right. definitely Irish bars are just trying to take it on board. And then that cocktail you had this morning, the yeah. Belfast coffee, mm -hmm. that is our signature serve. It's our it's our Pisco Sour, it's our Kuiperina, you know. So that it's a cold brewed, putchy in version of an Irish coffee. Swap the whiskey for white spirit, putchy. Mm -hmm. Swap the hot coffee for cold brew, stir it down like a martini, cream, nutmeg. I mean, yeah. they, out, they outsell Guinness in my bar. That so. was amazing. Yeah. 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 I can't even do that. I know. I can't even give out more water than <laughs> yeah, Guinness right. in my bar. So, yeah, it is, um, it's, it's going really well. We've got bars in London serving it, Belfast obviously serving it, Cork, Galway, and then we've one in LA. We just picked one up in Houston. They were straight away when they tasted it. They said, get that on the menu. Yeah. The bar is called Put Gin, so oh, it makes go. sense. Yeah. Check right. it out if you're yeah. in the area. Yeah. I knew, I, I, I might go to Houston next. I don't know, but I got to check it out. Do, yeah. do, for sure. So, um, you want to talk a little bit more about 1661? 1661 yeah. is uh, Dublin 7. So we're on the north side of the river. Anybody who knows Dublin is uh, all the money's on the south side. The work inside of the city is the north side. We're buried in amongst the old historic fruit markets in Dublin. It's actually yeah. one of the oldest parts of the city. So there's a lot of development going on around us, but we were the first business to go into that area. You know, people told me, stay away from it. It's dangerous, blah, blah, blah. I just fell in love with it. I'm, I'm trying to do a cocktail bar. We, we, I mean, we work with a lot of Irish foragers, but I got the world's fruit landed on my doorstep, fruit and veg. So my bartenders, I tell them when we're doing a menu, just go, get inspired, go for a walk. There's four square blocks of people yeah. selling stuff from all over the world, you know? And like, while we, we super promote Irish products, 
always pushy in his half our menu. Our menu is pushy in drinks and not pushy in drinks. That's okay, how yeah, we yeah, right. So, but they always have an Irish spirit, whiskey, gin, Irish cider, brandies, Irish apple, ice wine, loads of interesting stuff on the island. But we try to back it up with a foraged Irish ingredient. But you know, we don't shy away from imports because they land and get distributed yeah. from our doorstep. But yeah. Um, yeah, beautiful part. And then the history in the areas. These developers, every time they break ground. They find something else. The archaeologists are in. They got to mark it out. But right, you know, yeah. there's layers and layers of history underneath it. So anybody in Dublin, come see us. We got over 25 different puttins. I got well over 100 Irish whiskies. And I don't try. I'm not trying to have the most. I'm just trying to have the good ones. <laughs> yeah. Uh, jeans, but curiosities. I got a lot of uh, really yeah. interesting Irish produced nice. stuff. Yeah. All and right. we did it. The bar itself is it. You know, it's a modern craft cocktail yeah. bar. But um, I wanted to do it in. You know. Not a, not a like um, kitsch Irish style, but it's a very modern, classy, nice joint, mm -hmm. you know. And yeah. it feels like a cocktail bar, but you know you're in an Irish bar. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well, Dave, um, uh, this been. Thank you so much for an spending absolute some pleasure. time. Yeah, Thank yeah. You. yeah, yeah. I was yeah. trying to keep this in a, under a time limit, so no, no that's <laughs> great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. Uh, your your seminar was so interesting awesome. uh, this this year cause the conference for me is all the not that I've not gone to interesting seminars but this year's seminars I've been blown away by the information about the presenters who are doing it and you your your presentation was was on point awesome. it was Thank great you. appreciate that so yeah. I really appreciate you hanging out with me for a little bit um, folks find some pachin uh, you've got some in your area I mean these guys these guys are available uh, hopefully we'll get to see your we'll stuff soon we'll be here soon we'll be here yeah. soon yeah and, and anyone coming to Dublin come check us out 1661 yeah. tell us why you're there and I'll make sure I look after you yeah, yeah absolutely so folks we're going to wrap this up um, as always uh, check out any links I'll have links below in the description for all the products we're talking about and uh, yeah we'll see everyone again next time happy days alright cheers <laughs>